One common question I always see out in the forums is how do I work with different data types? It's so confusing casting and converting and trying to figure out what goes where and if this is compatible and that's compatible. Well, Qt actually helps you simplify that even further. So we're going to say include, and you're going to include something called Qvariant. Now, Qvariant is pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and check it out. Qvariant is a data type, so we're going to say Qvariant, and let's call this value equal 1. And let's go ahead and say Qvariant, and let's call this value 2. What witchcraft is this? Look at this. This isn't even generics. This is just you're shoving any value you want right into this thing. So we just put an integer in here. We just put a string in here. Let's go ahead and test this out and see how to work with Qvariant. So we're going to say void test Qvariant. And let's call this value. We're just going to print it out, whatever it is, and we're going to just do, simply do a test, try to convert this into an integer. And we'll say int test equals zero. And if you press the letter T or even TO, you'll see that you have all these different conversions that you can do to bool, byte array, care, date. I mean, just about every basic cute type is in here. This is just nuts. So we're going to try to int, because so we're going to convert this to an int. Notice how it gives us a pointer to a boolean. There's our callback right there, so we can figure out if this thing actually worked. That's not book, it's bool. That would have been really bad. All right, there we go. So really what we're doing here is we say, we've got this integer. We're going to take our Qvariant, call 2int, and then we've got a callback right here where we're saying, hey, modify this. Notice how we're passing that by reference. So I shouldn't call it a callback. It's really by reference. So we're going to say if OK, then. Well, actually, you know, we could just get rid of that and say not number. Save and run this. Hmm. Probably help if we call the actual function. There we go. There we go. So we have our Q variant. Notice how it wraps it in these parentheses so we know what's going on here. It has an internal type, so it knows what it's storing. So there's our Q variant. It is convertible to an int. Here's our Q variant, which is a Q string. And there's the actual data here, and it is not a number. Q variant is extremely handy and extremely powerful if you're working with unknown data types, where you can just simply shove the value in a Q variant, pass the Q variant over, and just move on in life. You don't have to worry about it. And it can actually do all the converting for you. I hope you enjoyed the video you just watched. That was a preview of one of the videos out in the Qt Core for Beginners with C++ course I have out on Udemy. I am going to be making an intermediate in advance, and then we're going to start working on GUI technologies. For example, showing buttons, lists, tree views, you name it, and then moving on to things like QML. Um, the reason why I've restarted this whole thing is if you're watching these videos out on YouTube, they are a little old. Um, this one was done in 2011, and the technology's changed over time. So 
because the technology has changed, some of these videos, as good as they are, really don't line up with the current Qt technology stack anymore. So I wanted to start from scratch. I hope to see you out on Udemy and also in the Voidrums Facebook group. See you there.